Hello, my name's Brenda Loosemore, and uh, I'm sitting in the dressing room of the Little Theatre in Torquay. I've been a member of local drama groups for 60 years. I celebrated my anniversary in 2020. What a year to celebrate that. However, I have actually been a member of Toads for 40 years. Uh, it was in 1980 that I joined and I was asked to play the part of Brenda in A Bed Full of Foreigners. In those days, we used to perform at the Babacan Theatre and we rehearsed in a place called Toad Hall up in St Mary Church. So I attended my first rehearsal and uh, the director welcomed me and said, oh, would you go and sit over there um, in that bed with that man? I thought, well, that's a good start, I must say. I mean, is this the den of sin and iniquity that I was told about when I first joined Amateur Dramatics way back in 1960? Well, I've got to say, I've been around for 60 years and I've had no experience of sin or iniquity in local drama. But there we are, back to, back to the bed and the man. Uh, it was actually Mick Bettersworth and he was so kind and so nice and we got on like a house on fire and so we did the play and that was my first experience at Toads. I'd watched the company for many years and I, my ambition when I first joined was to act with a gentleman called David Gent. I always admired him greatly and uh, he was a marvellous actor, well still is a marvellous actor and um, we've been very fortunate and we've been cast together in quite a lot of plays over the years. I suppose I'm best known really for um, my love of nice costumes. Um, some of my favourites have been, well, when I was Glinda in Wizard of Oz, I had a lovely pink outfit and a wonderful crown. Um, then, of course, I did uh, Les Liaisons Dangereuses, where we all had wonderful costumes and the most magnificent set. Uh, other memories are School for Scandal, which was, funnily enough, directed by David Gent. And um, that uh, back in 2019, I actually appeared on stage with my own real live daughter, um, Jo Loosemore. We've actually been cast in quite a few plays together, including Happiest Days of Your Life, um, separate tables. Oh, now there's a story. You have to have a sense of humour when you appear in um, local plays. Um, I had um, taken a chance on being in this play because it's a serious part and I'm not normally known for those, but um, I played my, um, my own daughter's mother but I wasn't a very nice mother, Mrs. Bell, she's called. Anyway, I gave my all, and uh, at the end of the production, we walked out of the stage door, and there were a couple stood outside, and the gentleman said, oh, I must tell you how much I enjoyed it. I said, oh, thank you very much. She, he said, now, I'm going to pay you a compliment. You reminded me of someone. I thought, oh, this is it. Dame Judy, Dame Maggie. No, <laughs> I'm afraid neither of those. It was actually Terry Scott in drag. Well, it wasn't quite the review I had hoped for, but there you go. So as I say, you have to have a sense of humour. Um, the other plays that I've been in with Joe, we did The Heiress, which is one of my very favourite plays. And um, also, I suppose um, um, I've done some more serious work and the two most difficult parts uh, I've had, um, Killing of Sister George, and also, although it's supposed to be a comedy part, I suppose, Madame Arcati, 
in Blythe Spirit, but it's fiendishly difficult. Uh, written by Noel Coward, of course, and I have actually been in a few of his plays as, as well. But um, I suppose over the last 60 years, best known for comedy roles, including Edith in LOLO and Mrs. Slocum in Are You Being Served? Now, I do believe that my Union Jack knickers are still in the Toad's wardrobe, so you never know, somebody else might have the pleasure of wearing them. I, I've got to say that I've had the most wonderful time, of course, in 60 years. I've met some very interesting people, some wonderfully talented people. And one of those people uh, was a lady called Isabel Goss, who gave me a poem uh, some years ago, and I thought I'd share that with you. It does have a resemblance to a certain poem called If by Rudyard Kipling, but it does have a theatrical theme. If you can keep your head when all about you are missing cues and blaming it on you, if you can thrust yourself when all men mask you downstage and make damn sure you mask them too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting off in the wings nor miss your entrance cue, and if you're prompted, don't give way to hating, Poor soul has got a thankless job to do. If you ad lib, but not make that your master, upstage the star, yet not make that your aim. If you can play in triumph and disaster and find the critics pan you just the same. If you can bear to have the lines you've spoken changed by directors whom you can't ignore and try it his or her way and not be heartbroken to find he's changed his blessed mind once more. If you could see the local publication and read the worst and smile a tight-lipped smile and tell yourself it's for your education and only curse the reporters for a while, then start again on the next play's preparation of two and a half hours worth of distance run. Yours is the applause, at least in expectation. And what is more, you'll be a ham, my son. <laughs> <laughs>